It's my feel good breakfast show. The sea may be flippant cold, but the comedy action will be sizzling hot in the upcoming comedy near the slightly less flippant cold sea event taking place on Saturday, the 21st of November at the Mask Theatre in Cape Town. And joining us are the headlining performers. It's Mel Jones and then, of course, host Chantelle Jackson, organiser and comedian Nicola Date. Ladies, welcome. Hello. Hi. Do you see I've got my presenter stance? Do you see I've I got I thought you my... meant the tore, you tore your pants, sorry. No, this, no, we won't tell you how that happened. <laughs> it's a COVID story. It's a COVID thing. It's a COVID thing. Everything's a COVID thing now. Because it has to be, because it's been a COVID year. Um, and I was, I was asking Nicola earlier if we can laugh at things now. Surely things have become funny again. Mel, I last spoke to you for the, the I think, the International Cape Town International Comedy Fest yes. pre-lockdown. Boy, didn't we know what was about to hit us yeah, back then? That was the last time we could actually enjoy performing and having a, we were having a good time, yeah. unbeknownst to us things were going to hit the fan and then we weren't going to be able to have this conversation about like rooms full of people and fun and laughter and... How do you, when, you, when you're online, because all of you have had to, to learn how to... How do you know when you're crashing? When, when you the, don't, you just don't. pretend that you're not. There was one time I actually said to the guys in the... I was talking to my laptop, obviously. <laughs> my laptop the guys and I... In the laptop. The guys my laptop and I have become like this. Yeah, they, well, some, and who knew there were so many people inside my laptop? So I was talking to the people, and at one stage, because they, they weren't online, you couldn't see them. It wasn't like a Zoom thing. You literally couldn't see. It was just you and your face. Were there actually so people I, watching you? I don't know, but I said to them, I said to them, guys, sit, sit. There's no need for you to get... All because you can't see them. You can make up your own audience. You can make up the amount of laughter. And then you can pause as much as you want because you can assume that they're laughing that much. Rolling around, gasping yes. for air. There's no COVID joke in that, please. <laughs> I don't know, when you said that you had COVID, suddenly it was like, am I allowed to laugh at the fact that you've had COVID? Because we're having a funny conversation. Yes. You're a funny person. Yeah, but how do She's, we... Yes, I think I've, it's Yeah, and I've, I've done about three sets so far since live audiences have come back about COVID. I'm so. kind of a bit jealous about that. That has actually created oh. work for you. I know. Oh, I, I've become... COVID, COVID yeah. I've got COVID envy. Oh. Yeah. I became famous <laughs> by having COVID. COVID. Hey, yeah. work it, man. Okay. You should yeah, <laughs> This is famous. <laughs> Everyone knows Graham. Yeah, I know. Well, I know, well, but, on but this you know, fake particular it you make studio, right. because this is where I work every day. That's, right. that's why. Chantal, how have you adapted to being a comedian online, being a comedian in 2020? Have you adapted? Why are you shaking your you, head? It looks I've like you haven't. I've had to adapt. Quite... The thing is, now when COVID hit and I had to do things online, I really regret getting the two megabyte line instead of the 10 megabyte line. Uh. Okay, because, like, you know, you asked, why, how do you know if you're crashing? <laughs> you don't. You just see your Wi Fi crashing and you know everything's <laughs> up in flames. Yeah, you're just buffering, <laughs> like dial up internet, you know? Jack, went... you should mention our show. Sorry to interrupt <laughs> when, I, when I had load shedding. Oh, it's terrible. She just looked like oh. a robot. Like, she. Oh, no. mm, oh, oh. It was horrible. I don't want to go back to those times, no. Well, no. Not unless not. you can do it on purpose, in but which case it's, it is really, it, really, no, really funny. I mean, like, you see, Graham, the thing about this is, okay, you, we also didn't prepare for online shows. I mean, I didn't even have the proper lighting. I actually literally used one of my bras in front <laughs> of my down lights in my house to create an ambiance for one of my live People shows. People who watched your shows now going, that was Why a did bra I that ah. looked your face. <laughs> I saw you that were... messy sheet <laughs> on your face. I'm trying to think if there's an underlying message in all of that. Like, you know yes, because um, women, women uplift each other and often, you know, it's bras uplift you. You do so... support each other. Yes. But that, also, funny. let's be honest, guys, it's 2020. We never used our bras for anything else. Uh, it, that's fair. Ah, you see. Other it's financial support. Yes. <laughs> I don't but know where this is going. Is really Do you want to continue with the interview? Because I don't know where this is going. Yeah, no, no, they were far worse off camera. You, you have no idea. This is actually them being reined in. We, we need to laugh. Now, I need to laugh. Now, it's been a dark couple of months, and I'm generally a positive person, but I've found I've become quite pessimistic. Mm. Why do you think people turn to comedy when days are darkest? And how do you, as a comedian, find inspiration when times are like this? Yeah, so for me, it's been, you know, a situation where you, if you don't laugh, you'll cry. Yeah. I think people are desperate to laugh. People are desperate to escape because 2020 has been difficult emotionally, financially, you know, psychologically. There has been so many layers and every single person I know 
whether it's been financial, emotional, someone has had something that has affected them in 2020. So I think that, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, it's cliche, but comedy is the best medicine. Laughter is the best medicine because it actually releases endorphins into your body. So I think it's really our responsibility as comedians to give people that opportunity to, it's, it's much cheaper than therapy. You I mean, are saving lives. Saving lives, and they only no. have to pay a hundred rand, Call me guys. Dr. Mal. Yes. No, one of my great pleasures in life, for the, the times that I've seen you perform live, and in a few different scenarios as well, is watching you work a room. <laughs> I you do can love work, work a room, girl. I genuinely want people to leave feeling good, especially in times like this, because we know that. I mean. People, it's so easy to say, you've got to remain positive, and guys, you've got to see the bright side of life, and you've got to have things to be grateful for. It's easy to say that, <laughs> but doing it is a whole different story. So now that we can actually physically go out into a room, because the energy feels different, there's no energy online. Uh, have, you, have you been on stage? I have. I've been on stage, and it feels incredible to be able to, because it's a mutually beneficial thing. I'm having a good time, they're having a good time. The better time I'm having, the better time they're having. So we feed off each other, the audience's energy, my energy. So I love engaging with people. Obviously, now I have to engage a little further away. <laughs> so what you're saying is you want people to heckle. That's what, what I'm picking I up. I don't want to heckle, such a harsh word. But I do I like, I do like to magnify their flaws somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, for this particular show, Chantal, what are you bringing to the party and, and, and what are you most looking forward to being on this stage again with this wonderful group of, of performers? Well, first of all, I mean, I have to deal with the fact that I'm going to get back up on stage and I have to deal with death again, so if people don't laugh, then I have an issue. I'm not, I'm not saying that I won't make people laugh, there is a possibility. <laughs> oh. Okay, Jack, because I have there hired you to be my MC, so <laughs> <Yes>. no pressure. <laughs> But um, I, th I think, okay, I think we're a very diverse group and I think that we all bring something to the party which is very niche and unique from each other. So um, I'm definitely not bringing COVID jokes. I'm so over talking about COVID. I'm so definitely bringing a whole new spiel of other things to this stage. So let's just say all of the things that I'm not allowed to say on the Espresso show <laughs> will be on the stage at the show. That was very Ooh. effeminate. You did a very... You were I'm moving into whole new realms of my life. This is what's going to be on the stage. I thought it was this a flower. Is <laughs> oh, that piqued a lot of interest. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. uh, I know what people would want to say on live TV, but they can't get away with ladies. Thank you so much. In fact, they, they spoke about diversity. I want to see them now carry that diversity into a pizza. We're going to see if these ladies can create something special in the kitchen. We're going to do something quite wonderful in a moment, but um, you can get some of that live, live, in the flesh comedy entertainment that you've been craving for by catching the comedy near the less flippin' cold sea event in Musenberg's Mark Theatre in Cape Town on Saturday, the 21st of November. I'm going to say it again. Tickets are just 100 Rand, which is ridiculously low, and you can book them right now at computicket.com. When we return, we're in the kitchen.